Thank you farmers, welcome to this episode of Fuyaitiri Menawadzi. Today we are looking at seedbed construction as we are headed towards the sowing of seedbed beginning the 1st of June, this 2023-2024 tobacco production. Now, as you all know, when we are during this time of the year, around May ish, June, we are headed towards establishing our tobacco seed beds. But at the same time, there is still a lot of activity in the grading sheds. We are still grading our tobacco and sending market however today we are going to be looking at seedbed establishment where it begins and how it goes on up until the end where you transplant it in september now if you want to have your seedbed in september you have to make sure that you establish it the first of june so that by september you have fit seedlings that can be sustained when it comes to the main field you don't want weaklings or seedlings that are not appropriate because it will affect your yield now you would find that where I'm standing, we have already established our seed beds. We have this side, we have 36 seed beds, and down there I'll be showing you there's also another 36 seed beds. So how did we get to this stage, to where I am standing at right now today? Initially we came with our disc haro. Why did we do that? destroy the existing seed bed from the 2022-2023 tobacco seedlings production uh, seedlings are uh, production. Because we are using the same piece of land due to the fact that we don't have vast amounts of land and we have to move with what is there. So we came in with our disc, destroyed the structure of the seed bed, we destroyed the remnants of the seed beds. After that, we came in with uh, irrigation. We get it roughly filled capacity, which is about 12 millimeters to 15 millimeters. Then after irrigating, we came in with our plow. The purpose of the plow was to overturn the the bottom soil to the top and the top to the bottom and we also wanted to have a good surface so after that one what we do uh, when we we came in with our methane sodium so the purpose of methane sodium it serves as both a herbicide and also a nematicide because given that we use this same piece of land to establish seedlings we are prone to nematodes so we came in with methane sodium it uh you can use it from different outlets maguire mind you this is not a sponsored episode but i'm just telling you where you might get uh these uh chemicals. so what we did is after the irrigation after the deep plowing we came in again with a bit of irrigation around six millimeters then we put in our methane sodium our methane sodium the reason why we irrigated first before coming in with methane sodium is we wanted the soil to hold on to the chemical you cannot just come with the chemi with a chemical without irrigation because then it will be blown away so after coming in with methane sodium for seven to ten days we came in with light irrigation roughly around five millimeters every day for about seven to ten days so that the chemical was uh holding onto the soil enough it didn't escape after that we waited for about three weeks, 21 days to ensure that the chemical was working properly within the soil destroying the weeds destroying the nematodes so after um, uh, waiting 21 days then we came in with the disc haro the purpose of that was to aerate the soil to perforate the soil to let out the chemical then we came in with light irrigation again then after our light irrigation that's when we constructed these beds now you would find that where i'm standing these beds are measuring 1.2 meters in width to 60 meters in length given that we are establishing uh, our seed, uh, our tobacco in september you would find that roughly maybe two beds would cater for about a hectare or one and a half beds can cater about to, uh, for a hectare. our hectare generally is 15,000 plants to 17,000 plants that's where we range so i'm going to be showing you exactly how the bed like as we move forward it's not very difficult to establish your seed bed but you just need to be careful and you need to understand the chemicals that you are going to be using we are not done controlling our nematodes we will be coming in after sowing with the vellum vellum is also a very good chemical it's from bay it might be very price costly but it is a very good chemical that i would encourage our zimbabwean farmers to use So these seed beds are still under construction 
as you can see we are using our lines to ensure that every seedbed is uniform in terms of the height and even the length because if it's not level and if it's not surfacey you would encounter a situation whereby you have water potholes those that will collect water from irrigation and it won't be nice because then you have a habitat for diseases and pests so you want to make sure that all your seedbeds are uniform level they are not they are no portals they are not uh maybe uh going either side they are just the same level right exact level and of the for the stones that are still on the surface they will be collected and put in bags and put on the other side of the field because we don't want rocks or lumps they will disturb germination the even germination of the seedlings <laughs> These are the 36 beds that you can see that are already prepared that are set to receive the compound S early next week so that we start establishing our seed bed 1st of June this year. This side, my apologies for the light, is still under construction. We are still constructing the beds. That's why you are seeing the lines and the strings that are attached from one end to the other. We are still waiting to construct them and fully perfect them so that they can also receive their compound S. So generally, this side that you are seeing is also 36 beds, like I have highlighted. This is 36 beds. Then we also have this side that is already perfected. It's also 36 beds waiting to receive its compound S. Now let us go to the entrance where I'm going to be see, uh, showing you our biosecurity, our measures to ensure that our seedlings field uh, in nursery site is clean and there is proper hygiene and sanitation. So as promised, we are now here at the entrance. This is our biosecurity measures where we have this little puddle of water that we constructed. There we place in some jig or some copper so that whenever uh, people are getting into the seedbed site, they first of all step into the, 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 this little puddle to ensure that their feet are clean and no disease or any intrusions are carried into the seedling site. Mind you, seedlings are very sensitive and they need to be taken care of properly. So this is the tank where there is water for washing our hands. In case someone has gone into the toilet or whenever they get into the seedbed straight from home or wherever they'll be coming from, first of all, they need to open this tap and wash their hands before getting into the seedlings to work or even just to look at them. We don't want any diseases or any pests. So that's it for today, viewers. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share this video. Until next week on Weaitiri Menawadzi, we'll be looking at other operations that we do here, like wheat and even maybe our plans for the 2023 2024. Uh, cropping season will also be talking about it. I just feel that it is necessary that I include you as the journey begins, not just you'll be seeing pictures of, on Twitter of how this happened without having a clear picture of how it started, how it's done, and how we finish off. Be sure to go onto our Twitter timeline, it's at agribusiness110. I'm always posting stuff every day. Per week I can post three times and you'll be updated on every activity that I'll be doing, be it on our farm or on other farmers that I interact with on a daily basis who are in the field. Thank you so much viewers. Bye-bye.